grey. I have sectioned out the money piece and the face frame section so that they get the most time, the most attention and the most chance to neutralise. So we're keeping them back. I'm staying off this section. I'm going to return to this with my 812 in a sec. But right now this is the 921 and 812 formula. Um, the ends mixes, so the 812 and the 912 or the 921 formulas are both mixed with 10 ball, uh, two to one. And on my route to make up time, I have mixed half six, half seven, one, two with five ball. And that is a one to one mixing ratio. So that's equal parts. Um, that just means I'm going to get a kind of heavier, stronger deposit out of that. And the reason that I'm doing that is because this toner is going to be on and it's, it's already starting to work. It's already on and counting right now. So if we want this all kind of done in one condensed session, then by making your root formula a little bit stronger, you're kind of compensating for that mix of time. If you don't want it to be that flat and that heavy, then you just kind of disperse the formula a little bit and give it full mixing time. But be really aware that this is all toning on the ends. So you might like to break that formula up with a little bit of clear just to slow it down. Again, on these sections, I'm taking this little triangle that we had earlier on in our bleach application. I'm going to just pull that out of the mix. And that's going to help me when I come back to do my root melt later on. So the reason we pull that section back is so that we go in with our dark color where we really, really know we want it. So our root melts. But then we know where we want to hold on to the lightness and the brightness around the face. When it comes to toning, we will recommend for you to get the full effect out of your toner that you do it on dry hair. With root melting, it's kind of a little bit of a rule break where you can do it either way. You can do both, but I think realistically in a salon setting, you're not going to have time necessarily to dry off every head that you work on. So when you do make that choice to root melt or to tone anything wet, just know that that is the equivalent of putting a drop of water into that bowl of color. And that means you are watering down your product. It's not going to perform to kind of full spec of what the shade is designed to do. You are always going to be weakening it in that situation. So once you know that that's what you're doing, that's kind of up to you to make that call as the stylist. Um, but if you want the full neutralization, you want the full power of your shade, then the best thing you can do is dry it off and allocate the time in salon to do so. But in this case, we're kind of happy enough to dilute the shade just a little bit. So once I've set up all my blondes on the end, I'll go back and I'll look at my mid band and then I'll absolutely fly through that top bit. It's basically just like a tint application at that stage. You're just being really tactical with what's going on with your tones and how much softening are we doing, how much neutralizing. So if I spin you there. So I'm looking at this um, front piece and it was quite stubborn. So I'm just gonna 812 from the top there. There's no point in me hitting that with the 921 formula because it's just not gonna soften it up enough and it's gonna be a bit of a waste. So 812 right up here to the root, but the very tip is half 921, half 812. So we're just blending down a little bit. Just means it's gonna be a little bit more effective for that section. So that's what you'll hear a lot of people call that kind of zone toning and work in different toners. You'll hear names like um, root melt, shadow root, root drag, root drop, like any variation on that it's pretty much all the same idea that you're running two toners into the one and you're mixing on the head so I wouldn't let the language kind of bog you down just get in and make it look good once you know your technique so I have my 921 812 formula to here then I have just pure 812 here just to deal with the warmth on the mid band and now we're going to come back and just root melt in all of these um, demarcation lines from the previous color as well as anything that we kind of think is a little too unnatural in our own. So I'm just combing down here. This is a color melting kind of blending type comb. So it does have like a little roller ball in it. So it helps to just push the color around a little bit without removing it from the hair. So what I'm doing is just rolling that down. I'm going to split this and it's pretty much a normal tint application at that point. Your sections can be a little bit thicker because you're working on wet hair. You're going to really oversaturate. I'm going to actually physically use my hands and rub this in and really force it through the hair so that I get my effect. So I'm just going to go 
go straight in there where all those previous highlights are. So some of this is my work I'm erasing and then other bits are kind of left over from the previous color, but all of it will kind of fuse together now. There'll be no kind of telling that there were multiple applications going on here. It's just gonna look intentional from now on. With your root melt, the important areas is to come back to anything that's on the hairline there. So these nice baby lights that we did earlier on, make sure you come back and saturate over them. So that's now blending onto the two previous formulas. So what you're gonna find is that they'll meet somewhere in between this half six, half seven mix. That's gonna hit the eights. So you're gonna land somewhere between a seven and an eight effect there. And they're gonna gradually all fade out into this eight to nine mix at the end. So you'll be kind of getting a gradient effect the whole way through. Um, I know I've been asked before, why would you go to the bother of lightening all of this only to go and darken it back down? That helps you to deal with any warm or very kind of resistant underlying bases where maybe you have applied toners and tints and things like that, but the client is actually asking you to make me ashy or make me cool or make me like a very flat brown. So if it's a case that she has an awful strong underlying pigment, or distribution of pigment in her own hair and her natural hair, or maybe like she's, she's got a hint of like a redhead in her. If you want to bleach that out only to darken it back down, you can get a much cooler effect and that might be what the client asked for. That does have to tie in with her condition and you really have to take that into account that if it's too big a process for her hair, then it's just a case of saying no and going back to the drawing board on something else. But if it's possible to do with respect to the integrity of the hair, it's a really nice option to do for people who want that proper cool brown or like a mushroom brown type shade or anything in between. So as I get to the top, the first place I'm gonna go is just on this part line here. I stop before I actually hit this section where my money piece is and any blonde I wanna retain because if I overlap that, I start to darken this formula. I might choose to do that if I need to lower it a little bit but I'm gonna be quite mindful with that. It'll be the very last thing that I do so that it gets the least amount of processing time. So I'm gonna just keep going in with my diagonal sections and basically watching for any demarcation lines or anything that I think needs a little bit of blending. And it is really up to you to be quite aware of any areas that you saw earlier in the process where maybe there were old smudges or you might've had bleeds or anything that need a little bit of blending. So when it comes to these side bits, similar to the bottom hairline, just pull them back a little bit. You can make sure that you have a little extra of your brighter blonde formula. So if I have my 812 right up to here, to make sure that I don't lose these pieces, I'm double checking that these overlap. So I'm making sure that I have lots of 812 so that when I hit this with my half six, half seven formula, that they blend in the middle, which means that I don't necessarily lose all of that lightning straight away. And I'll just split it again through the middle to make sure we get good saturation. So if you're working with very thick hair, you might have to take like finer sections than what I'm using right now. But Sarah is actually a dream to get through. See, lovely. So I'll just replicate that on the opposite side. We let that process for the remaining time that's on these lengths and ends. So I might say, give this another 10 to 15 minutes. And when this comes off as in the root area, which hasn't been on for as long, I'm kind of accepting that that's underdeveloped and that's gonna create that translucency. If you want further coverage of that, you'll leave it on for much longer, leave it for the full development time. If you're trying to do gray coverage, you should have done it dry. You begin here and you do your toner in the last 20 minutes. And here is Sarah all done. So just to recap the toner. So we had a 921 and 812 mix on the ends. So when we apply things like that wet, we're basically diluting the formula a little bit. So what that's done is soften the result that we got and just allowed a little bit of that underlying uh, gold undertone to come through. Um, so it's kind of retained the warmth for us. We root melted down with a half six, half seven, one, two formula. So again, that's just soften the result that we have up at the root. So that all these lights kind of pop up out of nowhere and they look really sun kissed. And our mid band then was just a straight eight, one, two, just to flatten these things out a little bit. But again, we left a little bit of that residual undertone coming through so that she gets that nice natural lightning and we get that kind of caramel effect that a lot of our brunettes love. 
And then if we pull her around, and you'll see there's all our blend at the back. So what we were looking to do was create pops of brightness, but retain a bit of the natural dimension that was already set up in her hair. And this is where our TZ lights have all come into play, that we have little highlights that come up out of nowhere, but have lots of dark throughout the crown to break it up. And we'll have a look in here. And then we've got our nice soft blend. Where nothing is kind of too obvious. I'll pick up our hairline. Sorry, get in the way of the camera. Man. So then we have a nice soft blend through there, no hard lines. And everything just works really natural. I mean, have a look. And relax. And there we go.